Hey guys, Miss Warren here. I, today I'm going to talk to y'all about um, the starting phase of a clay animal whistle. Now this guy has a little broken antenna. I've had him for a while. Um, this was the first one that I made. So we're going to be making a little animal and we're going to make sure the inside of the shell or body or head, whatever part you'd like this to be, is hollow. Then we're going to be poking some holes into the bottom and to where you blow into so it will make a noise. Okay, so that is the clay animal whistle. So before we even start, we need to start thinking in three dimensional. We need to draw a sketch of what we want from the side, from the front, from the bottom, from the top and from the back, because we need to start thinking in 3D and we need to plan where we want to put this little um, sound hole. Okay, so I'm gonna divide my page up. Into at least four sections. I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra room at the bottom in case I wanna do a little more sketching. So I'm gonna do something different. I think I'm gonna just do the head of an animal for this one. So I think I'm gonna do a cat head. So first I'm gonna draw it from the side. And for this one, the sides are symmetrical. So the left side would be the same as the right side. Now, if you have an asymmetrical animal you're drawing different on each side, um, you want to draw the left and the right so you can have a clear planning. So I'm gonna think about what a cat's head looks like from the side, and I want that big hollow area, because that's where like I'm, the air is gonna go in, and then I want the nose of the cat, I think I'm gonna blow in here in the mouth, and then I want the bottom flat, because I don't want it to roll around. So most of them are gonna have this kind of basic shape and then you're gonna add animal details to it. Then I would want an ear. Now the other thing with clay is you don't want anything too skinny that sticks out too far. Like you wouldn't want a giraffe neck because then it would break off really easy. But if this ear sticks up just a little bit and I can draw the other ear kind of peeking up over there, um, then it won't be too bad. Um, I think I'm gonna press some whiskers into it um, the mouth where I blow in will be right here. I think I want to put a little nose on it. And I think I want to do some big cartoonish eyes. So that would be the side of my cat head. Now, just to kind of show you a cross section, if I cut this clay thing in half, let me draw. It would be hollow like this. You'd be able to blow in here, you hollow down here. Then we have a very sharp angle poked into the bottom and a flat angle here. So when you blow in, the air gets cut in half and that's what makes the whistle noise. So on all of the, their designs, regardless of what it looks like on the outside, the inside more or less needs to look like big hollow area area that you blow into and 90 degrees from that area, uh, perpendicular from the area, you need to have where the air gets cut in half. So think about that. Um, I get a lot of turtles. Um, I'm kind of tired of seeing turtles to be honest, but I've gotten um, a penguin on top of an igloo. I've gotten a little like hedgehog body and that's the hedgehog head here. I've gotten um, all kinds of stuff, octopuses. I've gotten uh, dragons, I've gotten unicorns, I've gotten um, fox heads, I've gotten um, uh, like uh, Dia de los Muertos, uh, Chihuahua with like the flowers around its eyes. So really think about what you'd like to do for yours. Um, okay, so that's from the side. Now I'm going to think about how it would look like from the front. So the nose, so this is side, front, so I want like a little triangle cat nose. And there's its mouth. And the hole is gonna look kind of squarish um, where I poke it in. I'm gonna sh shadow that to show you that that's where the hole is poked in. Then the face is gonna be larger. Maybe I'll make a little bit of a triangle of out of clay here and here for its little like whisker area. Let's put that like that. There we go. So it looks like maybe a little more cat-like. And it's big. 
round head, its cartoon eyes. These will just be pressed into the clay design and then you can kind of paint it afterwards. Then its ears. I don't want them to stick out too, too far and I want them to be kind of thick so they don't break off. See, even this little snail where his antenna broke off, the longer and skinnier something is that sticks off, the easier it is to break off. Now, I did let a two-year-old play with this and that's why it broke, but um, you probably don't wanna get any skinnier than this. And if you get longer than this, you wanna make it a little bit thicker, a little bit sturdier. Now, the other thing is, is you don't want any part thicker than your finger um, because it will take forever to dry. Do you see like how the head, this isn't hollow. This is hollow. So if it's thicker than your finger, you want it to make it hollow. So um, even this tail part is hollowed out because I had to poke the hole in there to make the air hole. The head is solid clay. So don't make it thicker than your finger because it won't dry out in time unless it's hollow. So there's the front, there's the side. Now I want to think about what it looks like from the top down if I was looking at it. Okay, so if I was looking at it like down from the top like this, it would still be kind of round. Where I blew into it would stick out. Might be able to see the little triangle things I put on it. The ears would just be kind of like little C shapes from the top. You'd barely see those from the top. You might be able to see kind of the eyes like the nose. So it is hard, it is challenging to draw stuff from the top down, but you wanna have a good picture in your head for what that would look like to know what shape you wanna make stuff. Okay, now I'm gonna do one um, from the bottom, which looks very similar to the top down view. So there's like the, the nose that I'm gonna blow into, there's the roundness, of the face. Now here's the important part. Um, when you make the hole on the bottom to blow into, you only want to make it about a finger's width away. So because if I made that blow hole over here, the sound hole over here, um, the air has to travel much farther. So it's much less likely to be lined up correctly if you make it really far away. Now it doesn't need to be like right on top of it, but like one maybe two fingers in between where you blow in and where the sound comes out is what you want to go for here. So now I'm going to, so that's where I'm going to blow into. So just pretty close to that and perpendicular to it. I'm going to draw that. This slopes in and makes a sharp edge to cut the air. And then this has access to the big hollow area inside. So there we go. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more sketch to see what it would look like from the back. So I did the cross section sketch up here. I'm gonna do one more section to see what the back of the head of the cat would look like. It's not very detailed. You don't see the nose and you just kind of see the back of the ears. Now, if I wanted to make it more interesting, I could, um, when I get ready to color it, I could paint some stripes on it make it a little more interesting from the back. And generally when we paint them, we're not gonna paint the very bottom. Do you see how the bottom's not painted? Um, Cause if you paint it with glaze, we'll see uh, if we can get to glazing it. We might just do it with watercolor this year, but we'll see. But if we paint it with glaze and you heat it up, um, the glaze will glue it to the kiln shelf. The kiln is the oven we use to bake the clay. Um, so we never put glaze on the bottom. Okay, so that's it for today. Think about what you wanna do, maybe do some research. There's a lot of examples online of clay animal whistles if you look on YouTube or Google. Um, so do some research, decide what you would like to do for yours, and I look forward to seeing your work.